Antidihydroxylation is another kind of addition reaction where you have an alkene and you add two hydroxyl groups, one above the plane of the molecule, that's the one that goes on the wedge, and the other below the plane of the molecule, that's the one that goes on the dash. And of course you also get the enantiomer. There are two synthetic pathways that we can use to achieve antidihydroxylation of an alkene. The first is to treat a halohydrin with hydroxide. The hydroxide acts as a base and does proton transfer on the hydroxyl group of the halohydrin, creating an alkoxide. The alkoxide then performs intramolecular SN2 on the alpha carbon of the alkyl halide. So, we get nucleophilic attack and loss of a leaving group, which produces this compound. Notice, it's got a three-membered ring in it. This compound with a three-membered ring, where one of the members is oxygen, is called epoxide. The hydroxide is going to attack the epoxide on the more substituted carbon of the ring because there is more partial positive charge there. In other words, it's more electrophilic. So again, there's SN2 attack. On the more substituted carbon, and the ring opens. Here's the product. Note where the nucleophilic attack took place because it was SN2 we got an inversion of configuration. The methyl group that was there on a wedge ended up on a dash and the hydroxyl group added on a wedge. Now we just need to protonate the alkoxide and we will have our diol. Luckily, there's more water available to act as an acid. So we achieved our diol, and note that one of our hydroxyl groups is on a wedge, and the other one is on a dash. Bear in mind, however, that if we allow for a 180 degree rotation around that bond, we get a picture where both of the hydroxyl groups are on a wedge, like this. The other way, it, instead of using a halohydrin, is to treat an alkene with the peroxy acid. Two commonly used peroxy acids, peroxyacetic and MCPBA. you can see the CO3H motif that's what makes peroxy acids able to give an antidiol when you treat an alkene we won't go into the mechanism you do however need to know the outcome so say we take a transalkene and we treat it with MCPBA or peroxyacetic one of our OH groups would add on the wedge and the other on a dash and if you do that 180 degree rotation you see that you've got a meso compound
However, if you react a cis alkene with MCPBA or any other peroxyacetic acid, you end up with the following result. Again, one of the hydroxyl groups adds on a wedge and the other on a dash, but then when you do the rotation, you see that what you get is not meso. Sorry. And you also get the enantiomer. Now let's look at syn dihydroxylation. Say I perform syn dihydroxylation on one methyl cyclohexene. In this case, both hydroxyl groups will be added either above the plane, as pictured with the hydroxyls on wedges, or below the plane of the alkene, as uh, you would see in the enantiomer. The reagents you can use include osmium tetroxide. It bears noting that OSO4 is toxic. So, if we use it in a catalytic amount and regenerate it with either NMO or use a catalytic amount and regenerate it with T-butyl hydroperoxide, that's our best option for doing syn dihydroxylation. There's also a third pathway that involves using potassium permanganate, KMnO4, followed by hydroxide with a workup at cold temperatures. But this is a very strong oxidizing agent, and it's hard to control the products you get. Hence, there are two pathways to make a mesodiol. You could start with a transalkene and perform anti-dihydroxylation, so use a proxy acid. Also, you could start with a cisalkene what reagent would you use here? you'd use catalytic osmium tetroxide and NMO